Hi everyone, I'm Charlene. I'm the Parent Relations Manager here at Inspire. And I'm also a systemic family psychotherapist. So today, um, as you obviously already know, we'll be talking about emotional awareness and emotional regulation. Bear with me, I have some notes here, so I make sure that I won't forget any of the information I would like to share with you. So after the presentation, we'll have some space for question and answers. You can also start posting your questions um, throughout the presentation. Obviously, we will then cater to answer you after we're ready. Um, in the end, we'll also have a questionnaire for you to, uh, to give us your feedback about, obviously, this event today. So let's crack on. So I want you to check in a bit with yourself and try to understand what emotions you are feeling at this point in time. They might be emotions of happiness, curiosity about what we're going to discuss today. Maybe there's some frustration going on. Um, and also think about how you are managing to contain those emotions. So, for example, if you're feeling um, frustrated, however, you need to concentrate for this um, webinar, how are you man managing to do it? So why, why am I asking you these questions? Uh, basically, I want you to understand whether, for example, your answer was a simple I'm good or not good, or else were you able to specify the different emotions you're feeling um, and name them. And it's, uh, this, is, uh, this is called emotional awareness, basically. Um, so our, our ability to recognize what we are feeling and talk about it. Um, Emotional awareness is very much linked to uh, to depressive symptoms, which unfortunately is the world's third disabling health problem at the moment. So obviously the more emotionally aware we are, the better we are equipped to move away from depressive symptoms. Um, we also have uh, emotional regulation. Now we do this consciously or unconsciously on a daily on a daily basis. Um, when we talk about regulation, I want you to imagine a regulator. So a knob which you're, you can either increase um, or decrease. So imagine you have uh, an oven and you're increasing the temperature or decreasing it. And that's what we, we mean by regulation, regulating our emotions as well. So for example, if we're feeling angry, we're not always in a position to start screaming um, on top of our head. Um, we, we find ourselves in situations where we have to contain that anger and still um, act in a pretty much civil way. And also with, with more pleasant emotions. Even if we're feeling really happy, we, we cannot always you know, express it by jumping around. We also have to contain um, beautiful emotions like happiness as well. Now, before I was mentioning, um, for example, depressive symptoms, also emotional regulation is linked um, with depressive symptoms, where emotional awareness and emotional regulation, so the ability to identify the emotions we are experiencing and the ability to increase or decrease the way we are expressing those emotions. Together, they help us move away from depressive symptoms. So, um, how and why are these two, um, uh, two aspects of emotions, the awareness and the regulation, um, how are they linked together? So basically, um, I want you to imagine you have a, a friend, uh, your children, for example, or your partner, and they come to you with a, with a difficulty or a challenge they are currently facing. So I'm going to ask you, would you want to know what the challenge is, what they are going through? And I'm going to imagine that you're answering yes, because if you answer no, I will have a bit of a problem here. Um, so, and then my second question would be, why do you want to know? And I'm going to assume that the reason is that knowing about it, you can do something about it. You can help them through, you can discuss, you can find a way forward. And basically it's the same with, um, uh, with emotional awareness and emotional regulation. So uh, we would be uh, able to 
reflect upon that difficulty and also reflect on the strategies um, we are using uh, to contain or regulate those emotions. Now, earlier I also mentioned two um, terminologies, which is conscious, which, is, which means knowing, and unconscious, which is the opposite, not knowing. Now, usually when we are aware, when we know, when we're conscious about our emotions, we are also conscious about the strategies we use to regulate those emotions. Now, on the screen, you can see um, maladaptive emotional regulation strategies, which are basically what we mean by those terminology, by, by the terminology is they are strategies which will um, succeed in regulating the emotion. However, they might not be helpful in the long term. So if there is a particular difficulty which we are facing, we are not addressing that difficulty. To give you an example, let's say um, uh, we avoid to think about problems we are facing, for example. So avoiding to think about that problem obviously helps you regulate the emotion of worry and concern so you feel calmer. However, while doing that, while avoiding to think, you will also be losing out on opportunities to address that difficulty to reflect or discuss about it and see uh, how you can solve it, for example, or else learn how to um, live with the difficulty if it's not um, something which you can solve. And the same thing would be opposite if you tend to overthink. Again, when people um, overthink um, particular difficulties they are going through, it gives uh, uh, possibly a sense of control. They feel they're doing something about it. So again, they're um, succeeding in regulating that particular emotion. However, we also know that overthinking um, tends to enlarge difficulties maybe a bit more than they actually are, or they can give us more concern or make problems become bigger than they are because we are thinking a bit too much. So um, again, they are two strategies which help regulate the emotion, but not promote um, the bigger picture of our well-being on a daily basis. And now we move on to adaptive strategies. Um, and obviously they're the opposite of maladaptive ones, so they are linked and promote an overall emotional well-being. And obviously we have a lesser risk of mental health difficulties. Now when we say um, adaptive emotional regulation strategies, Usually, um, I like to call them learned helpful actions. These are actions which we learn through experience or, for example, uh, we observe um, role models in our lives, meaningful people um, and their strategies, and we feel that they are very good and they can be beneficial for us as well. So we take them on board. Um, uh, we need quite a lot of discipline sometimes with ourselves to uh, make use and decide to choose those um, adaptive strategies over the maladaptive ones, which are more instinctive. They come as a reaction, while adaptive strategies is a choice we do. It's a choice we make to go towards those rather than the others. An example of adaptive strategies um, is re-evaluating situations. Then again, let me give you an example. So imagine your child and they're having, um, they're expressing some behavior which is challenging um, and your reaction would be, I can't handle this anymore. He's doing or she's doing this on purpose. She's trying to make me angry. She's just making things more difficult than they actually are. So that's one way of um, seeing it. However, there is another way of looking at, at, at that um, behavior, which is not going to take away the challenge in that behavior. That stays there, so you still have to address it in some way. However, if you have to step back and say, listen, my child is trying to um, communicate something to this behavior and I need to understand what that is. I need to help my child. So it, again, it doesn't take away the behavior, but it puts you in a better place 
and even the mind will be a bit more clear on how you can address that particular behavior. Another way, another strategy would be on how our perspective on how we look at challenges. Obviously, life, um, it's part of life. It throws, it throws us in one challenge after the other. However, if we also observe our past experiences, we also observe that we always grew, we always learned from our challenges and we are thankful for them. Although they were stressful times, we can see the good that came out of it rather than remain pulled down by the heaviness of those challenges. So those are um, uh, an example of adaptive ones. Also, lifestyle can be an adaptive emotional strategy, as in, for example, having uh, doing regular exercise or having hobbies which help us uh, maintain a calm state, um, increasing dialogue with our relatives so we can discuss the challenges we go through. These are all adaptive strategies which one can choose to go for. As I, as I said, they're not always easy and we might not always feel we have all the time in the world for them. Um, but they are beneficial. So the more we, we go for them, the, the better the well-being in our lives. So how emotional awareness helps. So we also we already mentioned a couple of these. So we, first and foremost, we said that if we are aware of our emotions, we can do something about it. We can address it. Um, and it becomes more complicated, especially because we do not always feel one emotion at a time. We can feel more than one, two, three, even more than that. And um, so it becomes a bit more complicated on which emotion we're going to address first. So, for example, if we're looking at frustration and anger, so maybe we are frustrated about something, about a challenge we are not managing to overcome, and that is creating the anger. So it's useless that I try to calm my anger without addressing the, the frustration. It might need to go the other way around. So the more emotions we are experiencing at one go, the more um, uh, refined, precise and observant we have to be. Um, uh, also, we can see it also from the other side because we tend to always go for the, um, the challenges. But if we go back to, for example, leading a healthy lifestyle or going for exercise, we can also see what is doing good in our life. So we notice that keeping the same example of exercise or a particular hobby or meeting a um, specific group of people which do us good. If we are aware of that, we can do more, more of that and obviously um, automatically create a, a better well-being. So it's not just uh, choosing adaptive strategies when we are facing, facing challenges, but also on a daily basis when life may be a bit more calmer, we can do more um, of what helps us um, grow and have a better well-being. Um, another important thing is, basically we are human, so obviously I'm talking about emotional awareness and emotional regulation, and it's not something that you can, you know, click your fingers and we uh, um, become skilled in it. In fact, the next slide is, is going to address how we can become more skilled. But even when we are skilled, we are going to make mistakes. So, uh, as I said, we're human. Uh, the, the most important thing is that when we get ourselves, when we catch ourselves, maybe going towards more maladaptive strategies or reacting in particular ways, this, the better skilled we are, the faster we're going to realize that we took um, uh, an awkward direction and we can stop and say, no, let me stop this and move towards something which is more beneficial. So again, how emotional awareness helps. Now, as I said, 
we can't rely on how we're going to perform when time is challenging. So we can't say, OK, I'm going to practice practice emotional awareness and emotional regulation when I face my next challenge. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. In order to become skilled, we have to practice this on a daily basis. Um, and we don't have to spend hours doing it. But if we at least allow ourselves two or three, five or ten minute breaks throughout the day, just to stay in silence, maybe have a cup of tea or go for a walk and check in, just as we did at the beginning of this presentation, and check how you are feeling. And if you are feeling in a particular way, how are you addressing it? How are you containing that emotion? Because if, for example, we wake up and we're feeling a bit heavy or sad, it's not always possible, um, uh, you know, to, to, to stay with that sadness. Although we obviously it's very important that we do it. Many times we have to go to work. We have to take care of our children. Um, so it's it becomes a bit more it, it becomes a bit more tricky. But if we allow those five, 10 minute breaks throughout the day, where we can have some peace and quiet um, and check in, that helps you recognize much more your emotions and how you react to them. Another helpful um, thing is when you identify those emotions, you also decide whether you need to seek help, maybe professional help or help from loved ones um, uh, or people who do good in your life. So the more emotionally aware, the more possibilities that promote well-being will be available. So basically, we're almost towards the end of this presentation and the essence of it, I divided them into four um, different sections. So first and foremost is learning how to stay with emotions. So we can't, especially, especially the uncomfortable ones, we can't push them aside. We might need to push them aside temporarily. As we said, we need to attend to our kids. We need to go to work, whatever it is. But we know that we're going to go back there and check in with ourselves and see how we were feeling this morning or in the afternoon when something went a bit um, haywire and we were feeling in a particular way. Recognize them, give them a name. When you give them a name, they become more real. They become more yours. And then you can decide on how you are going to um, deal with those emotions and accept that they are yours. They are yours just as those beautiful emotions of happiness um, and they make you whole. You can't exist without the uncomfortable emotions. And see, um, uh, if you want to, to experience happiness in your life, you need to know what sadness is. They are both not just opposite, they are on a continuum. So sometimes we're closer to the more uncomfortable ones. Sometimes we're, we're closer to the comfortable ones, but one doesn't exist without the other. And obviously, ultimately, um, when we are aware of those emotions, when we stayed with them, when we accept them as our own, we also have the power and strength to choose more positive activities that can help us move forward um, through those uncomfortable emotions. And I conclude with this um, uh, beautiful um, quote, which, which says life isn't waiting. It isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning how to dance in the rain. So basically, as we said before, uh, life presents itself with challenges all the time. We can't get rid of them, uh, but we, we can learn how to dance our own choreography throughout these storms. And I'm pretty much sure that they will be beautiful dances around the world. So I guess we are we reached the end of this webinar. I thank you very much for your um, uh, presence and obviously your participation today. Looking forward for my next one on the 24th of June. Goodbye. Stay safe and take care.